Now, independent of its well, related, certainly, but still independent of this phenomenon is the direct effect of muscle disuse on insulin resistance. Now, no surprise, of course, you who are tuning into the metabolic classroom, I'm very much going to direct a lot of this conversation on insulin resistance. So a study by Dirks et al. 2016, link in the show notes, found that just one week of bed rest led to a significant reduction in muscle mass, so significant atrophy. And this is in young, healthy men, like college-aged men. You know, these are going to be the, the most metabolically robust of all of us. Even still, one week of bed rest resulted in a significant atrophy and about a 30% reduction in insulin sensitivity. Isn't that remarkable? So they became 30%, if you will, more insulin resistant after just one week of bed rest. And these are in young, healthy, college-aged males. These are bodies that are more inclined than anybody on the planet to keep their muscle mass. And yet even they had not only a significant drop in muscle mass, but a, a profound increase, 30% increase in insulin resistance at the measured at the whole body. So pretty, pretty significant. Now, I actually, just as a little tangent, although we're going to revisit this inflammation idea in a moment, I was a co-author on a paper that was published um, from Micah Drummond's lab. Drummond is the senior author um, from the University of Utah, finding that bed rest um, was causing insulin resistance in part through an increase in ceramides, which is the lipotoxic intermediate that is causing insulin resistance within the cells of the body. So the bed rest increased ceramides, and when ceramides were blocked, it mitigated some of the insulin resistance of the bed rest. Now, so that's muscle. So I want you to be thinking of muscle because it is just so relevant in our understanding of sarcopenic obesity. And remember, it's the sarcopenic part that is um, invoking the muscle in particular. Sarcopenia is the loss of muscle mass and strength. So what are some of the causes of sarcopenic obesity? Of course, Poor diet with aging is absolutely going to cause this. This is why so many people with sarcopenic obesity are in the later part of their life. Um, it's natural to start losing muscle mass with age. It's also natural as we become more sedentary and insulin resistant with age that we start to promote more insulin, uh, more adipose growth. A sedentary lifestyle compounds this. Chronic diseases can contribute to this. But let's focus on the metabolic origins, namely insulin resistance. And because I'm such a thorough professor uh, and scientist on this topic, we're going to look at this in a two-direction uh, a two-direction manner because this becomes somewhat circular, where not only does insulin resistance contribute to sarcopenic obesity by affecting both muscle metabolism and fat cell metabolism, but sarcopenic obesity also begins to contribute to insulin resistance or can directly contribute to insulin resistance. So each of these instances and through mechanisms we'll talk about. So each of these can be its own origin. So again, sarcopenic obesity can be a consequence of insulin resistance, but it can also cause insulin resistance. So the true causality here can become a little murky. Uh, we'll start with one that I think is, is more likely, which is that insulin resistance is causing sarcopenic obesity. So let's firstly start with this first mechanism within this pathway, within this line of thinking, the directionality being insulin resistance first, and then sarcopenic obesity being the consequence of this. So the first mechanism is going to be an impaired muscle protein status. Now, insulin is misunderstood when it comes to its effect on muscle protein synthesis. There are myriad published reports that find insulin is not necessary for muscle protein synthesis. So when you think about the protein in a muscle or all of the proteins, it's the proteins that not only give the muscle its size, more muscle protein means a larger muscle cell and collectively larger muscle cells mean that the whole muscle is bigger. But where there are more proteins within a muscle, there's typically going to be greater strength and power, which of course is essential for aging well and just healthy health span in general. Muscle mass is one of the greatest predictors of longevity and health span. So just living a long, capable, independent life. Now, again, there's a mistaken thought here. The thought being that insulin is anabolic, that it is directly stimulating muscle protein synthesis. A study by Sri Nair's group, um, study by Tesari et al. in uh, 86 or Gelfand and Barrett in 87, links in the show notes, they find conclusively the human studies that insulin rather than contributing to muscle growth by stimulating the muscle growth side of it in other words muscle is not uh, insulin is not anabolic 
um, by, by stimulating the synthesis of the muscle protein, but rather it contributes to this anabolic milieu within the muscle by inhibiting the breakdown of the muscle protein, a phenomenon referred to as proteolysis. So rather than, again, I'm going to state that again, rather than insulin contributing to muscle growth because it's directly stimulating the growth of the muscle protein synthesis, which does not appear to be the, to be the case, insulin contributes to muscle growth by inhibiting the breakdown of the muscle. All right. So for more details, certainly click on the links in the show notes of these papers. So insulin, rather than saying that it's anabolic at muscle, um, it, we would say that it is anti-catabolic. Insulin inhibits proteolysis. That's its main mechanism of contributing to muscle growth. Uh, 